coming from a heat pump and we had three pumps. This with a heat pump won't work. So uh, if you have pumps, pumps in series is something we need to do an experiment on because I'm not entirely sold. But let's just go through the theoretical correct answers. This in theory won't work because when you have hydraulic separation, let's put it at the lower header. The distribution header, the reason it's effective is because these pipes are larger, so there's low heat, lo uh, low pr no pressure loss, and round here is huge, so there's no pressure loss. When this pump comes on, it can easily just pull on its own return, that's being pushed into anyway, because it's circular, rather than pulling on here. The minute we go through a plate heat exchanger, that's a plate heat exchanger symbol, um, uh, on a heat pump, it, although we've got distribution lines, this part of the circuit, or even up to here we could have large pipe, this is high resistance. So it can't pull on its own return back round here. Can't pull on that because it's being restricted by that. So instead, it'll pull on this pump uh, if there's a change in demand or if it comes on or off, or, or it'll pull on both of them. Um, so we have to make, we have to put a loadless header in and complete the circuit. There's no point doing a distribution header without completing it to its own return. It has to be completed to its own return. Uh, and then, oh, so the other solution that, uh, is much better than that. Instead, would be remove the loadless header, uh, take out these pumps, put a bigger pump in, and set it to proportional pressure. Uh, and if you set it to proportional pressure, as these zones open and close, that will just uh, respond to the demand. Yes, you've got to spend more on a, on a, on a bigger pump, uh, but you've got to spend £300 on these pumps, plus the valves, plus the installation time. It can't, it's going to work out anyway. Put it on proportional pressure and you um, and it will respond to the amount required. That way you don't need the hydraulic separation, you don't get mixing and a lowering of cop um, because you need a high temperature. Putting the uh, zone valves on the return. Yeah, um, it like, doesn't matter because it's circular. Uh, it doesn't matter where the zone valves fit because okay. it's a circle, it's a circuit. Um, so if we've got a boiler, uh, and it's feeding radiators, uh, and you've got a underfloor heating circuit. I generally don't like to put low loss header in here um, uh, if if you need different flow rates, because uh, you could design them for the same flow rate. Uh, because I don't want to blend down in in here for both circuits. I only want to blend down for this one. So I suggest to put a zone valve here and a um, uh, and a, a balancing valve there uh, before your underfloor heating comes off. Um, so, Andrew Millwood, I know, disagrees with that. I've got a video planned uh, that will explain all my theory behind that uh, and why it's correct. Yeah, we only want to mix down where we have to mix down. Uh, but ideally, you could just design this whole system for DT 10 to 15. At minus three, the rest of the year it will be below DT 10, because uh, you set your pump to max. Um, and then you don't need any of this, and you can have it all open circuit if you work out that your pump is man enough to do this on the floor and these radiators. And it's more likely to be on a, on a boiler, because boiler hexes have lower resistance than the plate heat exchanger uh, of a heat pump. That would be your main scenario for most houses in the UK, though. Yeah, it would have be, yeah. the floor downstairs and rads upstairs. Yeah. Um, that is why the... Why yeah, that's why it's handy everyone, to... You see all of this on, like, Instagram or people just chucking in low loss headers yeah. and you're like, well, all you've got is one small underfloor circuit and a rab circuit upstairs, you either it's mental. size it all for one of the same DT yeah. or you can put a couple of T's in. The average heat loss in the UK is eight kilowatts. Um, eight kilowatts at DT, uh, let's go for DT seven, um, is the equivalent of uh, a 16, 24 kilowatts at DT20. So if you can transfer a 24 kilowatt boiler into a heating system uh, with the DT20 for radiators, you can do eight kilowatts of underfloor just off a boiler. It's the same flow rate. Yeah. It's just, that's DT7. But you don't even need DT7, you have DT10, and that's DT20. Um, so uh, quite often you can just come straight up to the boiler. Don't overcomplicate it. People putting stuff in so it looks better. They, it so look, feels like they're getting more value, um, but they're not getting more value because it's, it's yeah, been manufactured for no reason. The reason for the close cup of tea, I guess, would be if there's pump packs on it. Um, with it's also hard to calculate, so sometimes it's better off, do you know what, just be, put it on belt and braces, put a close cup of tea, or, or a low loss header in the main thing. Yeah, so if it's a small circuit, if you've just done like a little extension, yeah. extensions will be well insulated because they're new build. 
uh, standard, then it's not going to need a high flow rate it's at all. It's not that. It's when you turn up at someone's house that's got a boiler fitted, a 30 kilowatt Worcester, yeah. 10 rads upstairs, yeah. and someone's done all the underfloor with a pump pack on it. Yeah, we then, rip that out generally, don't we? Then they ask yeah. why they're... Yeah, they're heating, not working properly, or it's just running flat out. And yeah, they're building because 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 often we get radiator again. Um, often we get if you have got a higher flow rate for the underfloor heating. This is underfloor heating manifold here. Because uh, this pump's set to two or three, this can pull back. Uh, it's pumping that way. This can be pulling so much it's pulling more than the boiler. So this circuit goes that way, and you get reverse circulation uh, around the radiator so the radiator drops in flow temperature then it'll boost up again when the underfloor heating is satisfied then it'll drop down up down up down so we just turn that down to one um, but generally we're removing all of that and putting in weather compensation anyway if we're putting on weather compensation we probably put the best scenario is to put uh, an electronic mixing valve in there was there any more questions on your list um heat pumps in series then you would use a buffer to find yeah, I think you have to. Uh, didn't we work out? Oh, we worked out we had. Yeah, you have to do a buffer with heat pumps in series because, um, uh, and not just because it's the rule, because that's not how we work. We work out why. Because the pumps will interplay. So if you've got internal pumps, if you've got internal pumps, the pumps will interplay. Actually, so at this point here, the pumps will feed back on each other. Uh, pump interplay might not be a problem, but we're going to find out about that very soon. Uh, however, if instead you had two heat pumps without internal pumps, I don't see why we can't stick one large pump on here, provided you've got enough head, have that running around the circuit, and coming back. Yeah, um, if that's open loop, only if that's open loop. Realistically, you're down. If, if we're zoning this, or an uh, open loop, and we've got good volume in the main, I mean, you should have good volume here. Any, uh, also, uh, this should be this should be reverse returned. Provided we've got enough volume on this large pipe work and enough volume here and we've not overzoned and we've got the correct control, uh, control strategy, i.e. the target room temperature is 21 with, 21 with the weather compensation and the room stats are set to 22, so it's got room to move, they should just run absolutely fine. The other reason we want to make sure is uh, that's higher than that is because when it goes into defrost it needs to get round the radiators. So. You'll want all those zones if you've got zone valves on there open, uh, and for heating loops or whatever. Right. So yeah, I don't or see. You'd have to put a volumizer on it. Yeah, do you know what? volumizers. If, if yeah, if you haven't got enough uh, volume of pipe there anyway, yeah, volumizer. Really? I would imagine if you've got two heat pumps, you've got pretty hefty systems. I was just thinking volumes. But you know, volumizer. Big. So yeah. you say you've got two heat pumps there. You've got that pump, and then yeah. you've got all the stats on on your underfloor, your rads that are set a little bit higher. Yeah. You still have to put all the bypass in. Because um, you're still going to need, if that all shuts down and it does defrost. Yeah, you should do, unless you've got a radiator like a yeah. uh, tower rail or something like that. But let's say we haven't got a tower or our tower rail's got a TRV on it. Um, you should put one in. The problem is, and no one's come up with an answer yet, is this is a modulating pump. What pressure do you set this to in relation to that? How can, there isn't a way to do that. Also, how does this really perform if the, um, it, I, I mean, with this design theory of, Weather compensation at 21, stat at 22, you should always have one circuit open anyway. Yeah. Um, so I don't know about that, but I've, we've always made sure that you either take off a TRV head, yeah. uh, or, because the th problem is building regs can, uh, are that you you can't have an open bypass, it must be an automatic bypass. Yeah. I, don't, I think a tower rail might be an automatic bypass, I'm not sure, uh, but I, some of those regs don't apply to heat pumps as well. No. So. Uh, but I, I, like, I, I don't like pay attention to regs. Like, I pay attention to what's correct like from an engineering like, point of view. Like putting lockout on. Yeah. On yeah, yeah. Like putting on off stats. Yeah, exactly. Like, or interlock. Yeah. Putting an interlock on a. Yeah. On a heat pump on a, or a boiler. Or G three regulations for a heat pump to stop it from overheating. Yeah, when it gets. Because <laughs> it's going to get up to well over hundred like, degrees. Well, you put the sensor <laughs> in, and then. Yeah. All of a sudden, you've got to put boiler in a lot. Well, you don't because there's a sensor in there. So yeah, so they, 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 and then they have to swap. The, uh, mainly, the installers, I should imagine, be putting those on and off stats, so they're lowering the efficiency of the um, heat pump because yeah. they can't. There's not what's doing. So yeah, I don't know why that 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 could probably be a much better scenario. You'd have to have uh, zone valves on this. Um, uh, so when this the um, cascade controller knows which one it's running, it can turn off the other one and we don't get wasted circulation. Yes. Um, but apart from that, I I don't think you need a buffer yeah, there, exactly. except for maybe a volumizer. 
Um, when, yeah, generally when we're talking about buffer, we're talking about joining the two circuits. Yeah, joining it, like a big load or something, or having a lot. Yeah, of exactly. We are so excited to be facilitating exclusive training for the next generation of heating masters. The Heat Geek courses are designed to take you from heating installer to heating god with the ability to design hydronic systems from scratch, massively increasing your value as a heating engineer and earn yourself a recognised certification. Let us teach you the skills you need to charge more for your services and future-proof your career.